You may be familiar with the concept of high-dose thiamine for Parkinson's. There are, in fact, thousands of people using it now based on his case studies. Um, again, the first one he did was a small one. It was uh, three, three patients. They'd seen between 31 and 77, 77%, 77% change in their symptoms. So he went on, he took that evidence, and he went on to study some more individuals. He took 33 males and 17 females, and they did this over three months. It's important to know that they didn't use oral thiamine in this case. Okay? They, they used intramuscular. Now, generally, when you're using intravenous or intramuscular, the dose that you need is much lower. Okay? They use 100 milligrams intramuscular uh, twice per week. What did he find? He said between 40 and 50% improvement in Parkinson's disease. Guys, don't know how many individuals you work with with Parkinson's, but that is also not very common. Believe me, it's not very common. Now, what's even more interesting is he said some, some, some of the patients with a milder phenotype had complete clinical recovery. In other words, they went into complete remission from a so-called incurable disease. Now, is this, does this play out in real life? It turns out that it does. There's a community of thousands of individuals who came across this information and managed their Parkinson's disease just with vitamin B1. Sounds bizarre, right? In fact, there's a lovely lady that I had the opportunity to interview. Uh, I run a YouTube channel, it's EO Nutrition, and this interview is on that channel. I would highly recommend checking that out because she details her history. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, told that there was nothing that she could do, and she was put on levodopa. Her symptoms progressively got worse. She came across Costantini's work. She started using vitamin B1, and now she is in about 90% clinical remission, and she has been for approximately six or seven years. And she went on to write this book. This is not a scientific book. This book is designed for patients. She donates all of the money to a research foundation trying to get funding for more research. By the way, it's really difficult to get funding for using thiamine in, in Parkinson's. No one wants to fund it for some reason. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, this book is titled Parkinson's and the B1 Therapy. And there are countless people who are effectively symptom-free using one simple B vitamin. Is this addressing a deficiency? Well... In those studies that um, Costantini did, there were no signs of deficiency. There was no laboratory evidence of deficiency. And they also noticed there was an all or nothing effect. So there's something else going on here. Turns out he did several other case reports. Interesting findings. You should check out his work. Now, I want to go back to that original case report on, on Parkinson's and let's look what Costantini said. This might be able to give us an idea of what, what is going on. What did he say? He said, our aim was not to correct a systemic deficit of thiamine, but rather to increase the activity of enzymes involved in cell production of energy in, in selective brain regions. Hmm. Interesting, no? What might you mean by that? Very interesting. 